The tunnel, Brussels jargon for intensive, ultra-private and perhaps final Brexit talks between top negotiators. The idea of getting to the tunnel stage even yesterday morning was seemingly unthinkable. Now, we're not actually at the tunnel yet, but there have been decidedly positive noises from London, from Brussels, Dublin, even Belfast. Something has most definitely shifted. And if you're a supporter of a deal, well, you can see some light in the distance. Today, Michel Barnier was keen to stress that there's still a long way to go. Brexit is like climbing a mountain. We need uh, vigilance, determination and patience. Even seasoned experts, though, didn't foresee this sudden thawing of relations. Has what's happened in the last 24 hours surprised you? Yes, I'm, 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 I'm slightly surprised. It seemed to me that we were reaching a bit of a cul-de-sac. I was expecting a Johnson walkout, followed by a lot of noise being dragged, kicking and screaming into requesting an extension or forcing someone else to request an extension, which could still potentially happen, and then a general election. All of that is still possible, but this is certainly some progress that has come as a surprise. Do you think that, what, do you, what do you think the tiger looks Both like? Both sides have remained tight-lipped on the substance of the negotiations, refusing to be drawn on the contents of any possible deal. But a subtle clue, perhaps, from the Prime Minister at a school yeah. today, talking about the painter Henri Rousseau. Do you know Rousseau, was, he was called... Do you know what his name was? He was called Le Douanier. He was the customs officer. He would have been very useful. <laughs> Today. So what might those customs plans look like? Well, we don't know exactly what, what is being talked about, but the suspicion is that um, we're talking about a sort of a resurrection of part of what Theresa May's government was trying to do on customs, a so-called new customs partnership. And the idea effectively would be to create a hybrid situation for Northern Ireland, whereby Northern Ireland could benefit from a UK trade policy that could be different to the EU's, but on the quid pro quo for that would be that there would have to be checks on goods travelling from Great Britain into Northern Ireland to ensure that they either stayed in Northern Ireland or they went on to move to the EU. So what does that mean in practice? Well, so the UK, after leaving the EU, struck a comprehensive trade deal with, say, China. A trade deal that removed tariffs on widgets. A Northern Ireland business importing those widgets directly from China would still pay the EU tariff and then get a refund from the UK. Chinese widgets imported into Britain and then taken to Northern Ireland, well, once again, a tariff would be paid. But after proving the widgets weren't going to Ireland, the UK would give a refund. There are many different permutations around this arrangement, but something like this might just about fly for both sides. Even though the EU has previously raised concerns about this kind of partnership. They're worried it undermines the integrity of the single market. They're worried that goods imported at a lower, benefiting from a lower tariff rate from China, seep into Ireland and into the rest of the single market, undercutting domestic EU industry. And then there's the DUP who put out a statement today, reiterating their calls for a balanced and sensible deal. How much further will they be willing to bend? If an agreement does seem to go too far, particularly um, when it comes to uh, Northern Ireland not having any um, particular means of expressing consent for the agreement, then we could expect to see the DUP make its views known very clearly. Still to be done then, an agreement that we've actually reached the tunnel, then a deal, and then the ratification of that deal in both EU and UK parliaments. Time is running out and there's an awful lot still to do. James Clayton there. So is this the last minute deal that Boris Johnson has always maintained was possible? We're joined by Nathalie Loiseau, a senior MEP and until recently France's Europe minister, from Bristol by David Davis, a Conservative MP and senior Eurosceptic, and Lloyd Russell Moyle, a Labour MP who joins us from Brighton tonight. Welcome to all of you. Nathalie Loiseau, let's start off with this. I mean, you know where we were last week. I do. What's changed? Well, uh, there has always been goodwill on our side, uh, and until the last minute, we will try to find a deal with the United Kingdom. What we have been waiting patiently, but quite a long time for, was a detailed proposal. October 2nd proposal was full of 
obstacles for us uh, because it would uh, not prevent a hard border on the island of Ireland and because it would not protect the integrity of the single market. If Boris Johnson is ready to move and uh, improve his proposals, we are ready to work day in, day out. But he has moved, hasn't he? Michel Barnier said, said today our position is exactly the same. Right. So what's changed is the UK position, presumably. Uh, or at least the UK's willingness to enter in a real negotiation, uh, providing more than details, providing room for a deal. Because we need to uh, stick to our principles, not because we are ideological, but because they are key to peace in Ireland and no. to the integrity of the single market. One of the principles that uh, right. many EU countries have stuck to, and when I interviewed you when you were Europe Minister, you stuck to, which is that when we would ask you about Brexit, you would say, no, this all goes through Michel Barnier. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not for individual member states to make side deals. But that's what's happened with Leo Varadkar, hasn't it? I mean, he and Boris Johnson got together bilaterally mm -hmm. yesterday and changed the whole game, it seems. Uh, Michel Barnier is the negotiator and uh, we have been waiting for Boris Johnson to reach out to Leo Varadkar because of course Ireland is more than everyone impacted by Brexit and maybe give explanations which were long waited for uh, and if Leo Varadkar tells us well, I feel comfortable that we go into more details, we follow. But Ireland has given a lead, in a sense, throughout this process, hasn't it, to the 26th? Well, it's uh, a major concern that we would damage uh, the Good Friday Agreement, stability and peace which were reached in Ireland thanks to the support of the European Union. and. Ireland is the entry into the single market. So it's not that they have the key, but their situation is key to the problem or to the solution. Now look, we've, we've had a bit of fun this evening with this concept of the tunnel, uh, but realistically, mm. can this possibly be ready even as a sort of framework agreement mm -hmm. in time for a summit on Thursday? One never knows. I mean, uh, we have had a lot of surprises until now. Um, I doubt that uh, it could be ready to be signed on Thursday. Uh, I think people will do their best to make progress, but it is still a lot of work to do because we started a few days ago with non-papers. Of course, we could not negotiate on non-papers. Then a proposal which was very distant to what was acceptable to us. So I would be surprised, but I may be proven wrong, that something ready comes on the table on the next European Council. Does that mean then that people are already thinking about the possibility of another Europe, another summit meeting of heads of government maybe in the third week or, or, or even later in October? You know, this, we don't do summits just for the pleasure of, of doing summits. We have Barney. Well, neither do we. But. <laughs> and neither do you because you follow them. And we sleep very little in these periods. Uh, Barney is negotiating with his staff, with the British negotiator and his staff. It will take the time that is needed. This is a serious issue. You cannot simply say, yes, we have a deal, because it has to be ratified by the British Parliament. And we will need to have certainty that this well, deal can be ratified. It will not go to the European Parliament until it is ratified by the British Parliament. You've given us our cue here to bring in uh, the two MPs who, who we have from the two sides of the House. So, David Davis, let's start with you. I mean, in as much as you understand the broad outlines of what's being talked about, a, a type of customs arrangement for Northern Ireland, some form of consent mechanism, would you vote for it? Yes, I would. Uh, obviously, it's a compromise. I was a, an arch-Brexiteer. I would like to see Britain completely out of the European Union, but I'm also a realist. And I recognise that uh, the country was split on this, that there is a split in Parliament. And frankly, it took us 40 years to go from a trading arrangement to, towards being part of what I believe to be a nascent federal state. If it takes us a couple more years to get out, and if we, uh, if we have to take our time over it, and if that keeps everything running smoothly, and frankly, yes, if that gets this through Parliament, 
I'm fine with that. I'm happy to compromise. The real issue is whether or not Remainers, the arch Remainers in Parliament, who simply want to ignore the result of that referendum and are desperate to stay in the European Union, regardless of what the public voted for, are they willing now to accept that actually the choice that they have isn't between a deal or staying in the EU. The choice is going to be vote for a deal or we'll be leaving without a deal. And once they realise that that is the choice they have, I'd like to think that most of them, or at least enough of them, will uh, we'll vote with the government to get a deal over the line. But in terms of where this leaves the Prime Minister, his principal adviser, it looks like talking tough last week didn't work and that they've had to climb down. No, it looks to me like their strategy is working. I mean, we've been told over and over again that the EU weren't willing to negotiate on any of this and that it was all going to be bad news and, uh, and that, and that the, frankly, the negotiations were finished. And it's quite clear from this morning that that is far from the case. So the Prime Minister's strategy is bearing fruit. Having said that, I, I mean, I suppose Saturday, next Saturday, is going to be the, uh, the, the crunch day on all of this, I suspect. And I think over the following week, uh, ahead, we're going to have more good news and then bad news, and then it's going to be on and off again. And ultimately, this was always going to be something that was going to be knocked up uh, at, the, at the last minute. But clearly, the Prime Minister's strategy is working. He's, you know, well, he's right to talk tough. L Lloyd Russell Moore, let's, let's bring you in, because I expect you, you're not going to be particularly keen to, to back the idea that the Prime Minister's strategy is working. But if it emerged as a deal in the kind of shape we've been talking about, would you vote for it tomorrow week? Well, I can't imagine why I would, and I can't imagine why any Labour Well, it's a way to avoid a no-deal Brexit. Uh, the, 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 <clears throat> no, we will avoid a no-deal Brexit because Parliament has legislated to ensure that that can't happen, um, and we will ensure uh, that, uh, that, 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 that we have an extension, if need be, to be able to get um, uh, uh, and keep our country uh, safe. What Boris Johnson seems to be outlining, and none of us have details, and you've just heard the European Union doesn't even have details yet, so they are being polite and pleasant in terms of um, uh, saying that there are some things that they could talk about, but the devil is always in the detail. What it looks like is some kind of arrangement with customs. We never had a problem with the backstop anyway, and uh, um, uh, less rights on workers' rights, environmental rights, and all those protections that we were promised in the referendum would uh, carry over. And that's why Labour has now said very clearly any deal, whatever the deal is, needs to go back to the people because the people need to now decide this because it's nothing like what was promised in that initial referendum. But the pe back, when you say go back to the people, you're talking about a second referendum, do you mean before or after a general election? Well, if Boris comes with a deal then we have said very clearly that he needs to have the confidence of his conviction to put that back to the people. And we will um, uh, try and put uh, um, uh, mechanisms down to ensure that happens. If when you no deal is apparent, then, 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 then we will need to, of course, look at um, bringing uh, the government down and, uh, uh, and then moving to each stage. But, but my view is if I've we cannot predict too far down the step. Each stage is important in its own right, because there are so many different pathways. My view is, the Labour Party, um, uh, so the Labour Party's view is, that in all circumstances, all deals must go back to the people, and we are the only major party offering that to the country. Well, uh, uh, it is important, uh, you're, you're right, it's very hard to look further forward than maybe a few days, but I'm just trying to look to tomorrow week. Yes. It's a key moment when Parliament comes back. You've said, mm -hmm. put it to the people. So I I in your view, firstly, Labour Party policy decided a conference just two weeks ago was to have an election first and then a referendum. So you're saying that's already changed in the light of circumstances. N no, no, that's not but what... No, 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 that's not what the policy was. No, no, the policy was if... Uh, there is a deal come forward by Johnson. It should go to a referendum. We would campaign okay. for Remain because a, we would campaign for Remain against a Tory so, deal. If that wasn't possible, then of course we want an election because we're the opposition. We always want an election. <laughs> but don't misrepresent our policy that was passed at conference, please. All right. I, but I know you weren't trying to. Th thank you for pointing that out. But, but just to be clear, the version of leave that would be on that ballot paper... Is it the Boris Johnson version that may emerge in outline form during the course of the next week or two, or is it the Theresa May version? Well, I can't tell you that because it depends what Parliament 
passes. Parliament does have a vote on the Theresa May version, um, but the problem with all of these versions is they open up us to a kind of Trumpian deal where our NHS is on the table, where we have chlorinated chicken, and where we are further distant away from our European neighbours and colleagues, where rights for certain people are not properly enshrined going forward, where freedom of movement for many people that we need in this country to support our services David Davis. is ended. That is the problem with those deals. David Davis, I, I mean, presumably that's a bit of a nightmare for Boris Johnson if, if a week tomorrow the first thing on the order paper is something about a referendum. I mean... Yeah, I mean, look, I mean, look, Labour's policy is completely incoherent. They were going into 2017 saying they accepted the results of the referendum. Then it, then it changed that they wanted to keep us in the customs union. Then when that deal was offered by Theresa May, they were against that. Now, I mean, they've got this idea that they're going to go off renegotiate the whole thing, spend another couple of years in negotiations with the EU, come back with a Labour deal, and, and then campaign against their own deal. Uh, well, their leader sits on the fence on one of the most important issues that's faced you, this country for decades. We've got a really you, clear policy, and it's you, very, very simple. We are going to leave the European Union on the 31st. To crash the now, country out we're going out to bring a deal forward, first of all, possible. that would allow Britain to leave your policy. In, a, in, a, uh, you know, in a way that isn't going to cause any disruption. And if Remainers like uh, Lloyd Russell Moyle and the rest continue to try and frustrate the will of 17.4 million people, then we'll be leaving without a deal. So it's up to them. I mean, I'm perfectly happy to compromise. Right. I'm being reasonable here. I, as an arch-Brexiteer, would like to support Boris Johnson's deal. David, David the Davis. question is, will Lloyd Russell Moyle and the Remainers be willing to compromise and accept the will of the people? Thank you both, David Davis. My Lloyd compromise Russell will Moyle. be go back to the people. Thank you. Thank Again. you very much. Uh, now